Let me just start off by saying that it is so not fair that everybody else in the world is starting to pull out their sweaters and wear cozy clothes and I'm still over here sweating buckets like it's the middle of summer. Hey guys, today I thought I would wrap up what I read in the month of September, which ended up being just four books, but I guess I'm going for a quality versus quantity thing here because I actually really enjoyed most of what I read this month, last month. In September. Also, if you watched my fall TBR video, you will notice that I didn't do super well sticking to that list. I only managed to read one of those books in its entirety, and I did start another one, but um, I will explain all of that in a second. So recently in my wrap-up videos, I've been trying to start with the book that I liked the least and kind of work my way up to my favorite book of the month, but for my reading for September, I think it actually makes more sense to just go about this chronologically. So the first book that I read in the month of September was Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien. This was the book that I read and reviewed for April Magazine uh, in September, so if you would like to read my written review, I will link that in the description, uh, but if you prefer, I don't know, video format for your book reviews, you can check out my very rambly video review as well. Madeline Tien is a Canadian author of Chinese Malaysian descent, and this is her first book to be nominated for the Man Booker Prize, and uh, in September it was announced that she happened to make the shortlist, and I think it is so well deserved. This is a really fantastic novel, and I have my fingers crossed for her when the winner gets announced sometime this month. It's basically the story of how one family and group of acquaintances is so dramatically impacted by the Chinese Cultural Revolution, and really it it's kind of a story about how ideas can't be killed, how ideas and music and stories are eternal and end up linking people across countries and across generations. Although it did take me a couple of chapters to really get into this one, I ended up giving it four and a half stars primarily because the way Tian weaves the different stories and characters and ideas together is simply kind of magnificent. The main reason I gave this four and a half stars and not a full five is that I wasn't a huge fan of Marie's kind of framing narrative, but that is such a small part of this massive book that um, I think it's really easy to get past and definitely uh, definitely would be a book I would recommend to all of you guys. The main reason I didn't get a whole lot of reading done in September is that Do Not Say We Have Nothing totally put me in a massive book hangover. Like I couldn't even look at fiction. I was not interested because I just, I didn't think anything would live up to that standard and I didn't want to dislike a book because I read it too soon after an amazing book. So what I did instead was pick up a little bit of nonfiction. First, I completed uh, Samurai Warriors by David Miller, which I had checked out from my library. And this wasn't really anything special if you're looking for a pretty detailed book about samurai culture and samurai history. I guess I would recommend this to you, but it's kind of just one of those rather large, almost storybook format reference books. It had good summaries and it had good pictures, but again, nothing too amazing. I don't actually remember if I rated that one or not. Then I still couldn't fathom picking up any fiction, so instead I went for Avenue of Spies by Alex Kershaw, a true story of terror, espionage, and one American family's heroic resistance in Nazi-occupied Paris. This one I read for the Crown Publishing Blogging for Books program, and I have to admit I had really high expectations that weren't necessarily met. I had this same sort of problem last year when I read The Girls of Atomic City by Denise Kiernan, which was another uh, World War II era nonfiction book um, focusing on kind of a niche subject. I just, I feel like the, the publishers aren't pitching them correctly. If you read the subtitle here, it kind of gives the impression that it's really focused on this one family, which was the family of Sumner Jackson, who was a surgeon working at the American hospital in Paris during uh, World War II. But it really gives the impression that this family, this Jackson family, is the kind of center of the book's narrative. The book was actually more about Paris as a a broader city. It was more about the French resistance to the Nazi occupation, and although I guess the Jackson family was checked in on um, at different points throughout the narrative, it definitely wasn't a book about them. I thought it was a good nonfiction book. I thought it was really, really easy to read, and it, it felt very much 
documentary style where the chapters are very small snippets of information um, but it just wasn't what I was promised and so because of that I only gave this one three stars. And then the last thing I read in September was This One Summer by Jillian and Mariko Tamaki. Thank you very much booktube for the fantastic recommendation. I thought this was a really beautiful depiction of what it's like to be a very young teenager when you're kind of stuck between wanting to be more mature and cool and yet really still being a kid at heart. This is the story of a girl named Rose who is supposed to be about 15 years old, I believe, um, who always comes to this one small beach town or lakeside town uh, with her family every summer and has befriended another girl who is slightly younger named Wendy. On one level this is just pure summer fun and it definitely reminded me of Calvin and Hobbes in the way that Wendy and Rose really just get to kind of do whatever they want. Of course they do get into some shenanigans including drinking way too much soda pop, uh, renting R-rated horror movies that they probably shouldn't be watching, and getting kind of entangled or at least obsessed with this one couple of teenagers, of local teenagers, who seem to have quite the tumultuous uh, romantic relationship. But on a deeper level, Rose's family is kind of going through a hard patch. Um, her mother and father are kind of fighting because although they were trying really hard for a baby, they couldn't seem to make it happen and now they're not really sure where to go from there. And while the girls are definitely really good friends, you can see how Wendy and Rose start to rub each other wrong. Um, in several instances, whether it's talking about women or babies or sex or puberty, there's just a lot of awkwardness in their relationship, a lot of like mood swing moments, and I don't know, I just thought this was a really brilliant depiction of what it's like to be a young teenage girl trying to figure yourself out. Now I did only give this one four stars even though I can't put my finger on a specific thing that would have knocked it down a star. All I know is that generally when I give something five stars it's because I have this like overwhelming feeling that this has to be a five star book and I didn't really get that with this um, but I did really enjoy it and if you somehow haven't read this yet I would highly suggest you go pick this out even if you're not a teenager. So those were all the books that I managed to complete during the month of September but I did uh, attempt to start Hawaii by James Mishner. Um, I just kind of wanted to get going on it because it's so huge but I only made it I don't know, like 20 pages or so. I, I read the first chapter and I, I kind of got a taste for what I'm in for. It literally started with the first little bloop of lava coming up out of the ocean floor to form the islands of Hawaii. So if you didn't know what James Mishner writes, that's a little taste of it. So those were all of the books that I read in the month of September. I think I had quite an interesting mix there, but most of them I really enjoyed. So that gets a big thumbs up from me. I hope you guys had a good reading month as well and I would really love to know um, maybe what your favorite book of the month was but otherwise that is all I have for today's video so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and enjoying some cooler weather and I will see you next time. Bye!